Greetings, this is Paul, your Pacific Northwest Trail Guide. I want to help you pick your next trail to explore, so let's check this one out. The Goat Rocks Wilderness is a rugged and beautiful place to visit. This trip will introduce you to the edge of it and just might make you come back for more. You'll take a gradual wide loop from Wallop Lake up to Sheep Lake and return on the Nanny Ridge. On this route, you'll hike 15 miles and climb around 3,400 feet over three days. You'll start out at 3,940 feet elevation at Wallop Lake and reach over 6,100 feet elevation on the last day when you go up to Nanny Peak. You'll head southeast on Forest Road 21, a few miles south of Packwood, Washington, to make your way to the trailhead for this trip. Watch for the small brown sign marking the forest road as you are traveling on Highway 12. You'll follow the gravel, often washboarded Forest Road 21 for about 16 miles when you'll see a sign and turn off for Walloped Lake on the left. Making this turn puts you on the paved Forest Road 2160, which takes you the last four and a half miles to Walloped Lake. Follow the road staying close to the lake through the campground to the far end where you'll find trailhead parking on the left side next to some restrooms right before the trailhead. This trip is broken up into three days of backpacking about five miles each day. You'll find accessible water sources at least once along the trail each day hiking and at both campsite locations. The water sources are ponds, lakes, and streams that should be treated before drinking. Pack up your gear and three days of provisions, but leave your blueberry supply at home. Nature has you covered on those. You can alter this trip to a less leisurely pace in fewer days, but the trip I'll run you through here is well suited to getting a late start on the first day and getting some extra time to enjoy your stay at Sheep Lake. You'll get started on your trip by locating the trailhead just beyond the parking area. You follow the Walloped Lake Trail heading east along the north shore of Walloped Lake. Before long, you'll leave Walloped Lake behind, however, so if you want to visit its shore, keep an eye out for little spur trails that go down there. If you want to do any fishing, you'll probably want to do it here, as I don't think the little sheep lake on this trip is stocked. The trail may get a little rough and sandy in some areas, but overall it's a pretty easy going, steady ascent starting soon after you leave the lake behind and you are covered by the forest all the way. You'll be climbing a total of 1290 feet this first day and only descending a little bit here and there. After you've traveled a little over four miles, You'll approach a group of a few ponds before the junction with the Pacific Crest Trail. You can find campsites near the first two of these ponds. Just take the little spur trails off to the left to check them out and see what's available. The last and larger pond doesn't really have well-defined camping areas and seems to be surrounded by lots of marsh and uneven ground. This is a survey of the second camping area. There's more spots over at the first area if this one's full. Make your camp here and be careful not to pinch your tent on top of the many frogs and toads swarming around this area. On the morning of your second day, you head up the Wallop Lake Trail just a little bit to that junction with the Pacific Crest Trail and turn left, heading north on the PCT. You'll then soon begin your gradual ascent of the bulk of the 1300 feet of climbing for today. You'll be following this trail all the way to Sheep Lake, a little over five miles total. After you reach the highest point in the climb, you'll start descending some as you approach Walloped Creek. Less than a mile before you reach Sheep Lake, 
you will cross Walloped Creek as the trail turns west toward the lake. This is a nice area to stop and enjoy a lunch and check out a pretty area of Walloped Creek descending the hill. Who knows, you might even run into one of those wild PCT through rikers here. From the Walloped Creek crossing, you'll climb a little bit as you approach Sheep Lake. When you are close, you'll see a trail off to the left that you can take to look for campsites on the east and south side of the lake. You can also continue on the PCT to the Nanny Ridge Trail Junction and turn left there to look for campsites on the west side of the lake. There's basically a trail that encircles the whole lake with an abundance of campsites on spurs all around. In general, the sites on the south side of the lake are more exposed and the sites on the north and west side have more tree cover. During your stay at Sheep Lake, you might pick some of the abundant blueberries or huckleberries around the lake when in season. Or you might do a little bonus hike up north on the PCT. If you follow it a little over one and a half miles, you'll come to a little saddle and the border of the Confederated Tribes of Yakima tribal lands. From here you can take in a nice view of some other peaks in the Goat Rocks wilderness you might want to visit someday. You can explore farther, of course, if you have time, but if you head back from here, this little bonus will add up to a little over three miles. As you reluctantly leave Sheep Lake on the third day, head out to the south of the lake from your camp and you will join up to the Nanny Ridge Trail and begin your trip back on the final leg. You'll descend just a little after you climb out of the lake bowl and after about a mile and a half, begin climbing towards the Nanny Peak Spur Trail. Turn right onto this little spur to climb the bulk of your 800 feet elevation gain for this day up to the top of Nanny Peak for a nice view. That is, assuming the entire area isn't engulfed in a cloud like it was on my visit. Descend back down the Peak Spur Trail and continue on the Nanny Ridge Trail. As you quickly descend, most of the 2600 feet of descent you will do this day over the last couple of miles back to the trailhead. As you give your knees a little punishment, making this last descent back to your vehicle, Maybe you're looking forward to stopping for some real food on the way home to block out the horrible camp food experiments you tried. Or maybe you're taking your time, savoring the sound of being in the wilderness that will soon be unavailable to you. Either way, if you headed out at a decent time, hopefully you'll be home before dark and feeling like you were able to take time and savor the experience of this casual paced camping hike. One last note before we rate the trail. 
Think about the weather forecast when you plan this trip and try to match the times you'll be at Sheep Lake and on Nanny Ridge to days with clear skies. You might even do the loop backwards if it helps with that. Okay, let's go over the ratings for this trail. First, let's talk about the terrain. There really aren't any special features to deal with on this route, uh, but there is a decent amount of rocky, rooty trail to deal with on inclines. So it gets two rocks out of five for terrain. In terms of the elements, the high elevation of this hike means you probably want to watch snow levels and be careful about when you choose to do it. So two clouds out of five on elements. At about five miles per day, this hike gets three boots for distance. And the daily elevation you are dealing with on this trip is pretty average. And if you take the gradual way up, it's not really punishing. So I give it three mountains out of five. Well, that wraps it up for this edition of Pacific Northwest Trail Guide. I hope I have or will soon help you pick your next trail to explore. I scouted this trail in August of 2021, but trails are always changing. If you pick this trail and encounter any new features or changes people might like to know about, please help out your fellow explorers by sharing in the comments on this video. This video shows some of the beautiful sights of this trail and what feeble capacity it can render. A picture may be worth a thousand words, but an experience with all of your senses cannot even be conveyed in pictures or video. So don't take my word for it. Get out there and see it for yourself. Thank you.